Hi, everyone. Welcome to the program. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Plenty of guests to come along today. Terry Collins, Mets manager, is on later. Andy Martino will join us as well as Jim Duquette. But we start off with the general manager of the New York Mets, Sandy Alderson, is here. Hi, Sandy. Good to see you. Happy to be here. Well, let me get the stuff out of the way that you can't talk <coughs> about first. So I'll say this. Multiple reports saying that the Mets and Bartolo Colon agreeing on a two-year, $20 million deal. Of course, Colon coming off a great year, all-star, 18 wins last year. And, Sandy, I know he's got to take physical. He's got to pass uh, – everything to make it official so i know you can't comment but let me just ask you is is there is the budget this week been maybe a little bit more um or really not just this week all off season than, than we were led to believe by the way i've got a i've got a winter cold so if i cough take well, that as a no comment well, all right <laughs> i got you um <clears throat> look I, there's been a lot of bu- a talk about our our payroll budget yeah. there's been a lot of talk about us doing things not doing things uh, I think what I've said consistently is that we should just let this play out and see where we end up. It's, it's, it's highly unpredictable. You know, the, the, you can make a deal uh, on a particular day and, and go days without uh, doing something else. Uh, mm-hmm. It's all about the circumstances. So, um, you know, we're continuing to try to improve the team, and uh, we're doing that across the board uh, offensively, pitching-wise, and so, so forth, if we can. And um, we'll continue to do that. But in terms of our budget having been expanded or contracted, um, uh, really nothing has changed um, in our strategy or in our capacity over the last you know, week or two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're looking at and we've talked this week when we've had you on about you know, adding some depth to the pitching staff. So when you're assessing everything out there and how to best do that, did you look at this and first and foremost saying that, okay, we've got to find a way to replace what Harvey gave us last year? Not that you can yep. duplicate that, but is that the way you, you try to look at this and, and try to help fill this pitching staff a little bit? Well, I think that one of the things we, we decided strategically was you know, we have two spots open, basically, yeah. if you look at uh, you know what we have. Um, we felt better going after someone of higher quality to fill one of those spots. Mm-hmm. And leave the other spot either to someone we signed to a minor league contract who competes in spring training or to one of our young guys whom we keep professing are, you know, are the future of the franchise. Well, at some point, you got to give them a chance to pitch. And so um, the idea would be let's give them an opportunity to compete coming out of spring training. Maybe one of those guys Hmm. is in our rotation. So rather than look at a couple of mid-range guys that can fill out our rotation and bump our young guys back maybe we shoot for something a little higher quality and preserve an opportunity for our young guys uh to pitch for us coming out of spring training was you know uh, i think we talked about this on monday with those young guys and you gave me the feeling that uh, you certainly want to take a look but you didn't necessarily want to throw two young guys into the rotation to start the year right if you have that uh if things go through here and you have that guy who could be near the top of the rotation one guy, or are you more willing to take a shot with one, you know, of those young guys and have them have a shot, and the other guy go, you know, hone his craft a little bit more? Well, the other thing is you have to keep in mind that depth, that depth is important also. Right. So for us to take two of our young guys, stick them in the rotation, not only does it put pressure on them and, and uh, um, without the experience at the major league level, but it also uh, impacts our depth. Gotcha. Uh, can you characterize where the first base market is right now? We've had a couple of first basemen go off the market to the same team with Seattle today, which you don't see. Corey Hart, Logan Morrison. Uh, so can you give me an idea as a general manager where that whole market is right now? Well, it's it's certainly changed. I mean, t- two first basemen have come off the, the board, yeah. and they've both gone to the same team. It's probably good for you. So if we were looking to move a first baseman, that would be a good thing. But, again, you have to see how the market reacts to that. And, uh, you know, it's only been uh, a short period of time since, since uh, those events occurred. I've actually been in a rules committee meeting for most of the afternoon. So, um, <clears throat> again, I, I keep saying it, and I know it sounds trite, but you really have to see how things play out. And, and uh, what I think we've tried to do over the course of the winter is – Try to assess where things are, mm-hmm. and then hone in on someone and try to make a deal. Right. Do it again. Assess where everything is, hone in on someone, make a deal. And that's kind of how things have progressed, and uh, uh, I would anticipate that's 
that's how they'll continue to progress. Do you have enough ammunition now, at least in um, maybe gauging the market of, of one or both of those first basemen to have a clear idea of what you are capable of getting in return? No, I don't think we have any real clarity. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I have said today is that, you know, we're not in the business of giving away players. Don't intend to get in that business. Right. So, um, you know, again, we'll see. Fair enough. Yeah. Have you had conversations with Scott Boris about Stephen Drew? We've had conversations with Steve Bo uh, with uh, Scott Boris. Mm -hmm. um, a number of names came up, his included. Um, <clears throat> but that's the extent of it. If you were to, just one more thing on the payroll, um, if you were to make a move uh, of a player like that where it would take a little bit of money, um, would you require... Stephen Drew, a little bit of money? Okay, a lot of bit of money. <laughs> okay. But my, my question is, you're talking about the payroll, and we have made a lot about it. Everyone uh -huh. has. Yeah. Would that require other moves to, you know, open up some, some more flexibility there to go and do that? Maybe. Okay. Okay. Last one from me. Johan Santana, uh, we know uh, what he's done with this organization. I don't know where he is right now, throwing flat ground. He's got a way to go. Is there interest there still to, to maybe talk to him and, and see if there if there's a fit? And do you think there could be even a fitter uh, with him down the road? Well, I, I you know I don't want to rule anything out. We right. have a long <clears throat> history with Johan, mm -hmm. and um, and yet he's coming back off of two shoulder surgeries, right. and um, you know we have to take that into account. But look, he's he may have a number of options. Uh, somebody of his caliber coming off injury. Um, <clears throat> Lots of clubs will be willing to take a shot uh, at, at his possible return. Um, from our standpoint, does it make sense to do that? It makes sense to consider it. Right. Um, on the other hand, um, 2014 is not about individual storylines. It's not about uh, rehabs. It's about winning. Mm. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, we have to take that into account as well. I like it. Sandy, thanks for the time. Appreciate okay. it.